Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today to take a first look at the brand new BMW M3 competition and also the M4 competition. We're going to go for a complete walk around to go through all of the details of the now sixth generation of BMW's M3. We'll talk about the design, we'll talk about the kidney grill, some of the other features. We'll obviously take a look at the engine and go over some of the numbers and the different variants of the car that you can now have, plus the interior and some of the technology that's on offer in the new car. We'll then go and take a look as well at the new M4 competition and some of the new options that they're showing for the cars as well. So let's get started then taking a look today at the brand new BMW M3 competition and M4 competition. This is the new G80 M3. Now the sixth time that BMW M have worked their magic to the hugely popular 3 Series. For the previous era, where they sold over 100,000 of the M3 and M4 models, the 4 Series had become its own line with the coupe and the convertible, with the 3 Series being the saloon as we have it here in the Isle of Man green. In this case though, the M3 and the M4 have a lot in common, including the different variants, the base cars, the rear wheel drive and then MX drive variants of the competition models, they also share some parts, but most importantly, they share the driving dynamics. We're going to talk more about the different options and things that they have introduced, including the M traction modes and also bringing some additional functionality to the interior. But to start walking around the exterior of the car here, the saloon model, you will notice it is significantly more aggressive than before. The lines are sharpened up. It is much wider as well, 75 millimeters wider, in fact, and you can see that in these slightly bulked out arches. And of course, course around the front it now has this consistent face of the 4 series the m3 and the m4 actually share the complete front bumper and apron but we have those highly discussed new kidney grills the narrow and tall grills with the horizontal slats that they have across for the maximum cooling in towards the engine the 3 liter inline 6 twin power turbo engine making 510 horsepower in the competition models 480 if you had the manual normal m3 the non-competition along with 650 newton meters of torque in this 550 newton meters of torque in the manual but let's go through i think a little bit more of this design because it has changed from the regular 4 series of course also mirrored on the m3 and the m4 but you have all of this opening for the cooling in fact quite a few structural components have had to move and be changed behind the scenes we've got a very different look around the front end you can see how it has the curtains even with the blades you can see inside those to control the airflow and direct it around here more cooling in towards the different radiators and coolers that you have at the front and now also offered the adaptive sensors to help with um, additional driving uh, options available. We've got the BMW laser lights with the twin eye design on either side and those blue touches on the inside. But one thing you notice about the design is that you have this high gloss black lower section running all the way around, contrasting against the body color, but giving the impression of that completely lower flat floor. Like on a race car, for example, you might catch some glimpses of the Kailami orange interior, which we're going to go and see in a moment. But as we come around towards the back, look at how much the arches protrude, the front and in particular particular the rear that you can see just here. So the M4 hasn't quite widened as much as the M3 has because it starts from a wider beginning. But you can see on here, those are really quite, well, giving the car quite a lot of aggressive stance to begin with. You come around towards the back, we've got the high gloss black gurney sitting here on the boot lid, down towards the bottom again, that line continues around and we've got new larger exhaust tailpipes, the quad traditional two on each side tailpipes, now 100 millimeters, 10 centimeter wide. Uh, diameter tailpipes as well at the back. The M3 sits a touch taller, it's about 40 millimeters taller, but does come as standard with a full carbon fiber roof. Also with these spines that you can see running over, which obviously give it a bit of presence as well. And even now with mounting brackets for a roof rack, which wasn't previously available with a carbon roof. Should an owner prefer though, it can be specced with a, with a traditional roof, with a sunroof as opposed to the carbon. We've also got the new M mirrors. Again, a sharper design. And you see this so much through this car, sharper lines, slightly more squared off features. Even the power lines that run along the sides of the car, you can just see that they give it a slightly more dynamic appearance and even these grooves that you have on the bonnet as well. So let's look at the exterior. Let's check out the interior. Have a look at this new Kyalami orange interior, the launch specification for the M3 competition. The orange on the green, certainly quite bold and standing out. Now a few things inside here have changed, which we can go through. These are the standard seats, but they've been updated from the previous design. You now have an adjustable base rest as well as an adjustable headrest. Still 
with the illuminated M3 logos, which is always a very nice touch in the back of the seat there. But the most notable thing that has changed is the amount of control you have through the different driving dynamics and the different modes and settings and configurability of the car. You have the M1 and M2 modes now mounted up here on the steering wheel, like in the M5 and the M8, where previously they were here to the left side. But those allow you to control and at one press adjust the car through the gearbox powertrain settings, but also the integrated brake assist and now the M traction modes and the drift settings that I'm going to show you in a moment. Let's just head around and have a quick look at the engine of the car. Again, shared between the two different cars, the three litre twin power turbo inline six. This being the competition has the 510 horsepower and the 650 newton meters. The competition models are always with the eight speed M Steptronic automatic gearbox, whether it's the rear wheel drive car or the MX drive car. Then the manual car, which is always the non-competition, has the 480 horsepower and 500 150 newton meters. You can see the engine sits beneath these strut bars that are inserted over the top, but also some additional chassis strengthening has gone in underneath the skin where you can't quite see. Now we expect this is going to do the zero to 100 kilometer per hour sprint, 62 miles per hour in approximately, well, under four seconds for the automatic, just over four seconds for the manual, and onto a top speed of 250 kilometers that's 155 miles per hour as standard with the M drivers package that will be raised up to 290 kilometers per hour, which is 180. So the engine sitting quite packaged nicely back there, obviously held in place. They've had to change a number of things versus the regular three series as you would expect. This car is also on the optional 825M wheels, 19 at the front, 20 at the rear, a staggered setup. You've also got the optional uh, red calipers, blue would be standard, red or black can be optioned, and then gold with the carbon ceramics, which can also come as part of the race package. These tires, of course, set up uh, 275 at the front and 285 at the rear, as I experienced a drive in the manual car, a pre-drive uh, in a prototype camouflage car before. So I think let's head over and take a look at the M4 and go through more of the interior. We come then to the M4. This is the M4 Competition Coupe launched in Sao Paulo yellow. We've got a different wheel design and a very different interior, which we'll go to in a moment. But to start around the front, it has that common face, that same look at the very front, the same front bumper and kidney grills and the bonnet. And if we come in closer, I didn't mention before, but there's no kidney grill surround like you normally see on a BMW model. That's to make use of every bit of available space for the cooling coming through. Now this car is wearing the black 826 M wheels. We have the 825 Ms on the M3. It can be had in two different finishes. We've also got the gold carbon ceramics that you can see as well. And again, we've got 19 inches front, 20 inches at the rear, one inch above the standard wheel size. As we come round towards the back, you can see that sloping roof line of the coupe, convertible of the four series to come in the future, but similar setup, similar look. It's only 40 millimeters wider at the rear though, considering the slightly wider start of the regular regular four series as opposed to the three series, but we again have the gurney flap, the high gloss black up there on the competition model, and also the quad exhaust tailpipes. But come and have a look at the interior of this car in Yas Marina blue, which was the launch color of the previous generation actually, finished with some of the yellow accents, but most importantly, with this new carbon electric seat. You can still adjust it, there are some controls. You can see also there are cutaways to save weight and also for ventilation, and the way it's finished in the different color schemes as well that you have around. Also quite a bright specification for the launch of this car. But let me take a step inside. This is of course a prototype pre-production vehicle and show you a little bit more of the system down here. We've got the M4 Competition uh, logo. If we make sure the car is properly awake just for the second. Here in the system, which is the now 10.25-inch uh, screen for the centre and the 12.3-inch for the driver's dashboard, if we go into car here and go into the M menu, M Drift Control. If you go into M Drift Control, the car will give you statistics and records and data of your drift. So if you pull that perfect 300 meter drift somewhere, obviously on a private closed location, you can have all the data here to actually show it. In fact, if you're back in the main menu and you turn off traction control, as soon as you've held that down and it brings up this menu, it says start M drift control. It will also in the four wheel drive when that arrives here have the option for start MX drive, where you can then put it into four wheel drive, four wheel drive sport, or into two wheel drive mode should you prefer. But there are lots of other settings. You've got the M mode here, like on the M5 uh, competition and the M8. If we press that, 
It takes us into the sport setting, which changes the dashboard appearance. And if you hold it, it goes all the way into the track setting, which effectively turns off the infotainment when you activate it and turns off that central screen and means you are entirely focused in terms of having your settings to the left, uh, sorry, to the right and your tire pressures uh, and temperatures over to the left. Obviously, ignore graphics. We are, like I said, in a pre-production. And this is where if you went into M1, for example, you can see the different setup. Now, talking of setup, I do want to get this central screen back. So we will go back into the normal mode because if you press setup here, it brings up this display where you will notice at the bottom we have the new M traction setting. Now again, with traction off, that's when you can change this, but you can literally change on a sliding scale your traction settings and how much slip angle you would like the car to allow you to have. This gives you that variable element to configure exactly where you're comfortable or for the environment or for the settings and where you're driving, which is really very, very cool. Now above that, you've got the brake, the integrated brake assist, where it changes the feel that you have through the brake pedal, the amount of pressure uh, that it requires to get full braking. It doesn't change the amount of braking that you have, of course, for safety reasons. And then you have steering, chassis and engine, the other controls. Now, BMW M had considered adding these buttons in here, but basically to do all of this and all of the different settings would not have fit in the amount of space available. If we go back into car though, and go back into the M menu, here you can configure your M1 and M2 and get a quick glance at quite how much there is that you can change. The engine, the transmission through the drive logic settings, which change the speed of the shift, the chassis, steering, brake, traction, M traction, start, stop, sound control. This is exactly what I love. The ability to personalize the driving experience and to have effectively three different settings available to you. Standard, M1 and M2, and effectively the press of a button along with all of your uh, other technology available. And I have to say, sitting in the bucket seat as I am at the moment, it is very comfortable while being rather supportive too, and obviously has the gloss carbon back. And there also seems to be quite a decent amount of space uh, over in the rear. Obviously the color scheme in here is striking. I think that's one way to describe it. Certainly stands out, but with the carbon parts as part of the racetrack package, which adds a whole series of, of lightweight options effectively. You get the carbon ceramics, you get the carbon buckets, you get the carbon trim to match, you get the M drivers package uh, that raises uh, the limit, the speed limit, and you also get, uh, I think, a number of other things along with it too in that overall package. But inside, you can see the familiar infotainment, the iDrive system uh, that we know from other models that allows you to completely set up and configure and go through a whole host of different screens and basically have this exactly how you'd like. He says, I've gone straight back into the uh, M menu, but there's a lot of things in here. Caring car, vehicle status, driving information, displays, all going to be very clever um, when you can see all of that. And this also has the Harman Kardon uh, sound system installed. I think you get a 10 speaker system as standard and then can upgrade to the Harman Kardon should you prefer, but crucially, of course, buckets that fold so that you can still access the rear and then electrically moving forwards to give plenty of space. In fact, I'm gonna try this. Let me climb on in to the back of the M4, just see how much space there is back here. Pull the seat back. That's cool with the cutouts in the back of the seats. Oh, that's actually better than I thought. There's not the world's most headroom, of course, with the sloping coupe roof line. I'm about 1 meter 80 or so, 5 foot 11, that kind of height. And not the hugest of space in the back, but I would be quite perfectly comfortable for a decent length journey in the back of here. I think also, by the way, we should probably, oh, he says, let's pull that forward. There we go. Also jump into the front and actually start the car so that we can hear the sound of the engine while we are here. So I'll go back to my position and then take a step inside, press the magic red button and bring it into life. You get the grumble of the inline six. And into M1 mode, you can hear the valves opening up as well. Had a good opportunity to hear more of this at my recent drive experience. But let me hop back on out of the M4. A couple of other things to touch on. M4 also has the carbon fiber roof. There's a structural component underneath as opposed to the sandwich construction we saw on the M2 CS. You can also opt to have this with sunroof should you prefer. There's also an option available for a carbon exterior pack, which consists of some carbon fiber pieces to go inside here to direct the cooling, carbon fiber mirror caps, and a few other carbon pieces around the exterior of the car should you prefer. 
And like I said, both uh, wheel options can be had in two different colorways as well. M4 and M3 otherwise though share the same different engine variants in terms of the rear wheel drive and MX drive and the manual and eight speed automatic gearboxes. Obviously the different setups in terms of body style and different levels of practicality depending on requirements. They're not exactly impractical in any stretch of the imagination back here. We just open We've got quite a decent amount of space, plus the 40-20-40 folding rear seats if you want just one side down, or let's say just the middle down to be a through loading system. They've taken away the cup holders and storage though that you might have back there just to save some weight, because after all, it is the performance version. And there's a decent amount of room back here, even in the M4 as opposed to the M3. If we close that back down, you've got the black M4 competition logos. The non-competition obviously wouldn't have that lower section. I feel like the BMW logo has grown uh, on the back of the car as well. And then down there, those rather large exhaust tailpipes. I do quite like this touch, this kind of floor of the car that goes all the way round. Perhaps the diffuser, not my biggest thing. I think it's changed uh, a little bit, but overall, I tell you, you do grow more to this design than you might expect, particularly at the front. In person, it makes much more sense than I think it might do in photos initially, because it's so radically different from the design that came before with the old style grills, much narrower and wider grills, and suits probably the character of this car. So this has been, I guess, a tour of the M4, as well as the new M3 competition. Interested to hear your thoughts, do comment down below, but hopefully that's given an insight into the different versions that are available and some of the details and some of the plans and thinking behind it all. So thank you very much for watching guys appreciate your support as always and i'll see you again very soon cheers